Hotel Dusk Room 215 is one of the more fondly remembered cult classics from the DS's long library of experimental games. Holding the system like you would a book, you control grisly detective Kyle Hyde and wander around an old motel, solving a series of strange mysteries while something much bigger looms quietly in the background. It's an adventure game that, by all accounts, I shouldn't like due to its incredibly lackluster story. The plot threads are woefully underdeveloped, the dialogue is expository and lifeless, and a lot of the flavor text is bland to a degree of sheer pointlessness. Indeed, I had the exact same problem with Developer Singh's previous game, the otherwise ambitious adventure puzzler Another Code to Memories. But whereas Another Code leaves me bored and frustrated, Hotel Dusk often left me rather endeared to it. Why is that? Well, it's fantastic character animation. The animations that accompany each and every character are some of the most delightful, impressive, and downright charming I've seen in any video game, and I feel that needs to be elaborated upon. So, to celebrate its 10th anniversary, in Europe at least, let's talk about why Hotel Dusk's character animation is so good. Hotel Dusk has an oddly realistic aesthetic in regards to how characters look and move, so it may come as no surprise to learn that the game utilizes the age-old animation technique of rotoscoping. This is a process where the animator takes live-action footage and traces over it for each and every frame to create more realistic-looking and moving human characters. Rotoscoping is something of an occasional mainstay in animation, showing up in a good few cartoons by the Flesher Brothers, a couple of Ralph Bakshi films, and most infamously in recent years, the anime adaptation of Aku no Hana, or The Flowers of Evil. However, it's not used in video games anywhere near as often as traditionally animated models or sprites. Its use in the original Prince of Persia is still likely the most well-known example of rotoscoping in the medium. Rotoscoping is a very divisive method of animation, one that detractors criticize for being creatively bankrupt for the sheer concept alone, and one that often results in characters who move in seemingly unnatural ways, as if they're mechanical husks trying and failing to come off as human. But why? Surely if you trace humans moving in real life, surely it will come off as natural and charming as talking to an actual human, right? No, because, to put it succinctly, the subtle hints that we as humans use to communicate with and understand each other are lost in the jump to animation. At the risk of sounding like David Cage, the emotion of an abstract drawing of a character can't be directly emulated from real life, so the only thing that can be done is to exaggerate that emotion through the visuals. This is why so many shows or films have characters react in over-the-top ways, or why people animated by Milt Call always talk with bopping heads, or why Hiroyuki Amaishi's action scenes are full of strong, dynamic poses that are impossible for the human body to accurately portray. So, when your animation is trying to directly copy how humans look and move, the end result feels off. Like, there's something not right about the way these people move around or talk to each other. It is, in short, an apt demonstration of the uncanny valley. The term used to describe the uneasy feeling that comes from viewing failed attempts at accurately recreating realistic-looking human beings. With that in mind, surely Hotel Dusk should be subject to the same fate with its character animation. A morbidly fascinating display at best, a heap of animated corpses at worst. So why is it so good? Because it does something rather unusual with rotoscoping. It combines this method with elements of traditional animation. As detailed in a short making of video about Hotel Dusk's sequel, Last Window, the creation of the rotoscoped animation is as follows. Step 1. Actors who resemble the characters most closely are cast. Step 2. The actor acts out a series of gestures which correspond to whatever mood the character is supposed to be expressing. Step 3. Those movements are then traced, frame by frame, to produce the animation. Now, most attempts at rotoscoping end there, and the results speak for themselves, for better or worse. However, the animation for Hotel Dusk goes a step further, which is... Step 4. 
The traced animations will be adapted to give the character's appearance non-realistic elements, usually derived from the character designer's art style. Notice how the characters move realistically, but their facial features tend to be much more stylized. Their eyes are big and bright, thin and weary, or tiny and meekish. Their noses will be straighter, their eyebrows more expressive, their mouths much more abstract and less lifelike. The end result is a style of rotoscoping that actually works much better through embracing aspects of traditional exaggerated animation, instead of abandoning them like so many others. The realism to the characters' gestures lends a sense of gravity and weight to their situation, as if they were real people, but the stylized elements allow their emotions to come across more easily and naturally to the audience, as if they were cartoon characters. Lewis's sheepish nature, Rose's constant frustration with her workload, Martin Summer's never-ending display of smugness. These are aspects that, if rotoscoped in the traditional manner, wouldn't be conveyed anywhere near as well. These expressions add charm to characters who otherwise have none, and make even the blandest of conversations feel a bit more gripping just through seeing these people express themselves in such a unique way. And no, I don't believe that giving these guys traditionally animated sprites would have worked. It would have taken less time, and there might be a couple of decent animations, but I suspect the end result would have been akin to another code, or to use another example, Ace Attorney Investigations. Somewhat well done, but does nothing to alleviate how dreadfully dull the writing is. The animation of Hotel Dusk may not be the most mind-blowing thing in the world. Hell, it isn't enough to stop me from considering the game to be a crushing bore most of the time. But I feel that it is something worth talking about, because of what it proves. It proves you can look at a decades-old tradition like rotoscoping and still find ways to innovate the concept and take it somewhere new. It proves that you can animate realistic human movements and have it seem natural through adding hints of stylization. And it proves how important presentation can be for any work of art, including video games. Yes, the gameplay or story are often seen as the most important factors to a game's quality, but there's something to be said for giving that game more than just those things. What would Spyro the Dragon be without its excellent iconic soundtrack? How could you enjoy Broken Sword without its stellar voice cast? And would Hotel Dusk be as endearing without its fantastic character animation? I think not. Thank you for watching. I know it's been a long while since the last video, and the reason for that was pretty much that I wanted to get a new, better microphone than the one I've been using these last four years. Unfortunately, there's been a lot of hassle and uncertain waiting around in that department, so what I assumed would take two or three weeks has now taken two or three months and counting. I'm sorry for the delay and for not explaining this at an earlier date. I'll try to put out new videos more often, regardless of the microphone issue, so watch this space for something new. In the meantime, if you're interested in what I do, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, and hitting the little notification bell to let you know when I've put up a new video. If you want, also consider following my Twitter account, where I occasionally post some updates and answer some AskFM questions. Plus, if you didn't know, I compose and arrange music as a hobby, and a good bit of it is available on my Bandcamp page. Give it a listen, and perhaps consider paying for whatever you like? I'd really appreciate that. When all said and done, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and until we meet again, have a great day, y'all!